In this problem, we need to find the remaining trig functions for angle theta if this angle terminates in quadrant 3 and we th know that the sine of theta is negative 8 seventeenths. There are two different methods for doing this problem. The first one involves identities, but however, using identities, if you use that method, it involves a lot of fractions. I much prefer the other method, which involves drawing a picture, putting your angle on there, finding x, y, and r for that given angle, and from that you can find any trig function you need. So that's the method I'm going to use here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to just sketch our angle in quadrant 3. So here I have my angle in quadrant 3 and we draw our little right triangle. So here is my angle going all the way around here. There's angle theta. And now I need to figure out on this picture where 8 and 17 belong, and somebody has to be negative. So remember, the definition of the sine of theta is y over r. And one of those has to be negative. So remember, r is always positive. So you're going to make r equal to 17. And then we're going to land up with y equals negative 8. And so let's put those on the picture. y equals negative 8. You can see in quadrant, when I'm here in quadrant 3, y looks like it's negative. R is always positive in all these problems, so R is 17, and we're going to have to find the value of X, this distance here. And before I even try and find it, is X going to be positive or negative? Since I'm in quadrant 3, we know that X had better be a negative number. So how are we going to find the third side? Given two sides of a right triangle, we always use Pythagoras. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we're trying to find x. So x squared plus y squared is negative 8 all squared equals 17 squared. So x squared plus 64 equals 17 squared is 289. So now I need to subtract 64 from both sides. And I get x squared equals 225. So x is, now remember, Looking at the picture, x has to be a negative number since I'm over here in quadrant 3. So x is the negative square root of 225. So x is going to be negative 15. So now I know all the values for x, y, and r. I can find any other trig value I need. So remember up here, I already know what the sine of theta equals. So let's find its reciprocal first. Remember, the cosecant of theta is 1 over the sine of theta, which is 1 over negative 8 over 17. And how do you find that? You take the reciprocal of this. So it's going to be negative 17 eighths. So that is equal to the cosecant of theta. Now let's find, it doesn't matter which one we find next, let's, let's find the cosine of theta. Remember in terms of x, y, and r, that's x over r. x is negative 15. r is 17. So I now know... Here I have the cosine of theta. What's the reciprocal of the cosine function? Remember, that's the secant function. So it is going to be 1 divided by this, or it's just the reciprocal of the cosine. What's the easy way of doing that? Just flip this upside down. 
So we're going to get negative 17 over 15. And the last two we need to work with, the tangent of theta is y over x. y is negative 8. x is negative 15. So it's positive 8 fifteenths. And that is the tangent of theta is 8 over 15. The last one, what's the reciprocal of the tangent function? The cotangent function. So all we have to do is take the reciprocal of the tangent function. That means flip this fraction upside down. And I'm going to get 15 eighths. So we found the other five trig functions. And just before we finish, double check the signs. Remember the mnemonic, all students take calculus. We're in quadrant three, so we're down here. Who should be positive? The tangent and its reciprocal should be the only positive trig functions. My tangent over here was positive. My cotangent was positive. Were the other four negative? Yep. So that is a good check to do at the end of the problem.